Good morning, good morning, good morning. Last night, I went to my pre-licensing seminar and it was intense. It was intense. So I'm pretty much going to be where many of you are starting your first business because like I said, I don't know anything about selling cars. Um, just based upon the research, it looks like a good business to get into. And it is a lot. It is a lot. Um, so the first big issue is before you can apply for your license, you have to have a place of business. And that is a little bit challenging because uh, this week I'm going to intensify my search for um, a place and you got to have your place of business before you fill out your application to get your your dealer's license and there there are many many steps first of all um, you got to get a letter from wherever you are the zoning commission saying that you know because that's really good because i've there there are stories because i went to visit someone in doraville and he has a lot and he's trying to sell it i think he's trying to retire and um he said that many people have tried to start kind of businesses and they spent money and the city of doraville would not approve their business so that is wise now this is something i might have to do to get this thing started i might have to go for my broker's license which means you could sell cars out of an office building but you can't have a lot you will be a broker or a dealer so essentially when you get your dealer's license your cars need to be at your place of business and that's not going to work in the office park because the parking is going to be reserved for uh, people in the office park and their customers and stuff so you could not have a i mean it, it, it gets a little tricky because there's a there's a dealership on car gurus that is um they're in a warehouse type situation i believe and every time they have a car for car gurus the car is parked in front of the office and there's only one car and it's always parked in the same spot so i don't know because what i thought would be permissible would be to get a small place and have a another place that you could store cars, but it, it doesn't work like that. I mean, you could do that um, low key. You know, I'm all about the illegal illegal where I could have a small lot and then I can buy more cars and I will advertise them from that lot, but I would just store them somewhere else. Uh, now I could not sell them from that location. That's called curb stoning. And there's some hefty fines. You remember back in the day, and this is something you used to see, like someone would have a car for sale and then be parked in front of a grocery store. You don't see that anymore. There's a reason. It's a thousand dollar fine and they will impound that car. So I got a lot to learn. I'm estimating this is going to take me about three three months to get up and running because the big issue is the location. Uh, the auctions, once you get your license, the auctions are every week. So buying cars for the lot, that's not a problem, but it is finding the lot and deciding what way I want to go because I could get a broker's license and buy one car and sell one car and buy one car and sell one car or pretty much 
get an office park and pretty much have five or 10 cars. I could do that. Um, and then grow the business because it's easy once you have a dealer's license to transfer that license to a new location. That's much easier than starting off. So that that's an option because uh, I can go over to this office park who's literally around the corner from my house and they have a lot of parking. A lot of parking. I mean, I could pr pretty much I can do about 50 cars there uh, easy because uh, I was in that office park and I know how the parking lot works and uh, there's a I mean so I'm going to talk to some people about uh, getting this set up and working on it but it is um, really interesting this car business there's a lot to it. There's a lot because I'm going to need some more education. I'm probably going to buy a course on it because essentially, you know, selling the car to someone out of state, there's rules and regulations. Selling the car to a disabled veteran with a pat, there, I mean, there, there, there's a lot that you have to do. And, you know, for me, being on the buying side, I was a very simple car customer. Even when I bought my car out of state, I bought the X5 out of state because I couldn't find the color combination that I wanted here in Georgia. So I had to go to Florida and it worked out well. So another thing, <clears throat> and this is something that I may take half of the money and do I may go ahead and have a car rental program where you rent a car buy some really cheap cars thousand fifteen hundred bucks and rent them out for 20 bucks a day um, that's something that's you know 20 bucks a day it's like 600 bucks per month and essentially in two months these cars are paid for so rent these cars out first for two months and then sell them on a payment plan you know let's say I got a car for a thousand bucks rent it out for two months so the second month I'm profitable on that car about 200 bucks and then I go ahead and sell it um, for like three thousand dollars buy here pay here so I've already made all my money back from the rental and now I'm sold the car and that is just more and more cash. So there, there's a lot of ways to do this. And since I'm an internet guy first, this gives me a lot of, um, gives me a lot of flexibility because uh, the, the lady was saying last night, that dealers would go ahead and have websites set up and they would own they wouldn't own the website and I already know that I'm going to when I have my dealer site built I'm going to buy the domain name and I'm going to get someone to develop it and I will always own that I mean she was like there are people who have social media pages they have websites that they don't own which was crazy to me and uh, you know so being an internet guy first, it, it's kind of funny. You know, with my matriculation from having a brick and mortar to go into a warehouse to go into an internet model, I have been selling on the internet since 2000-ish, 2000 one, 2000, 2001. So I have, about 20 years of selling on the internet. So this is something I know very well. And this is where most of the sales are gonna be. So I got some questions to ask, some things to set up. Uh, there are some amazing opportunities here because with the rental first 
tactic where I rent the car out for two months, put it on the street, buy it and start having cash flow come in every week. Um, in literally two months, that car has returned its original value and I can put it on the street as a buy here, pay here for three to $4,000. And also here's something that's really interesting. Last night I was, I was the only one that was going to do buy here, pay here. And, um, one of the things, and this is something the guy's like, he says he's the only one that wants to make money because you, you got to understand there, there's a lot of people out there with challenge credit. And then when we go ahead and put the credit program together, I got to find out how to report payments to the credit bureaus. Because essentially what I'm going to do is design a plan where I will report that payment to the credit bureaus. And I, I gotta find out the, the legality of this, but you know how my jewelers club, um, what is it, my jewelers club and all this other stuff? If I can create a program where you're renting the car, which means that if you don't pay me, I can come get it. I don't have to wait no certain time. If I create a program where I can create a payment to the credit bureaus, that's gonna be really, really powerful. And a lot of buy here, pay here's, they don't report. I don't know why, but I'm gonna find out. Because if I can go ahead and say, hey, come in here, and let's say, I sell you this $2,000 car, right? And I was like, you go ahead and you build credit with me. And like in 18 months, let's say a year, of you making on-time payments, and let's say you want to trade that car in, and you want to upgrade. Uh, you've built credit with me, I trust you, I, I know you, so let's say you come in, you get a Honda for like $3,000, and you keep that for a year, then a year you want to come in, and you want to upgrade to like, let's say a $10,000 car. And, because most buy here, pay here's, uh, there's a limit to where they they stop um, So let's say I got people into $15,000 cars buy here pay here So go ahead create the rental situation like let's say I go to an auction I buy a car for $5,000 and from what I've seen I can retail that for 10,000 put someone on, on a, a payment plan. So let's say I rent that car out for five months. So I, I get my $5,000 back. So this car has already made its money back, okay? Then I put it on the buy here, pay here lot. Since that car has already made money, I can then in turn sell it like, hey, you give me $3,000 down. The car's already made its $5,000 back. I already have that back in my pocket from the rental. And then what I can do is sell it like, so I get my 5,000, I get the $3,000 down payment. So I'm $3,000 to the good. I've already got all my money back, so I can't lose and also, if I have to repossess it, guess what? I can sell it again, have someone else put $3,000 down, and that car has made a lot of money. So I'm going to set up the car rental business first. And I need my dealer's license so I can have access to the cars. But I'm going to do, I'm going to be heavy on the rental side. Um, one of the things I'm going to buy in Porsche, I've seen it, Porsches do really well in the rental market. So I'm going to rent some Porsches. I'm going to buy some Porsches and put them on the buy here on the, because, you know, I can invest. I got a lot of money I can invest in this business because, you know, the 150, that's just what's in my personal checking account but I got more money than a corporate account. So there's a lot of options here. 
So one of the things that I, one of the reasons I don't want to do an office building, I want to have a lot with a garage. So if we buy, because essentially buying damaged cars, the cars with issues, you know, not rebuilt or savage titles. And I found out in the state of Georgia as a dealer, unless you have a special uh, rebuilt dealer's license, you can only sell two cars like that per year in Georgia as a dealer. So there's a dealer's license and there's a rebuilt, rebuilt dealer's license. So, you know, I may have to be, I may be forced to do the office complex because that's going to be super easy. Um, and I've rented from these folks before and I know that I can have a pretty, I can park a lot of cars at that location. I know I can. So, but the city of Sandy Springs, because the thing is you have to get your dealer's license. You have to get your resale uh, certificate, your tax license. And then you have to get your business license. You have to get your surety bond. And then you have to get your insurance. And all of that has to be on the wall of your office. So there's a lot that's going into that. And um, I really, I really don't know right now. So I'm going to start a new LLC. I'm going to call it Mac Daddy Autos LLC. Uh, I need to go. I may do it. I may go. I may hit. I may do that today. Um, put it part of the holding company structure. So we may be doing that. But it's going to be really exciting because that car rental aspect of the business is going to be very, very powerful because since I'm a dealer and I will have access to a lot of cars, I can bring a car on, rent it out, get what I put into the car back out of the car. Um, Cause essentially since I will have access to the dealer lot, Let's see, like, let's say I bought a Porsche Panorama. If I bought it from a dealer, we're looking at $30,000. I buy it from an auction, we're looking at fifteen dollars to $18,000 for the same car. So I could essentially start a car rental business you know, uh, Jeeps do really, really well here in Georgia. The Porsche Panorama does really, really well. And, you know, even though Turo said no, I haven't tried the other ones. So this is gonna give me a lot of flexibility. And plus, here's something that a lot of car dealers, car dealers run ads on auto trailer, auto trailer, car gurus, they don't run ads on YouTube and they don't run ads on Facebook and you can run ads locally on both. I can set it where I'm just average, you know, if someone in Atlanta is watching a YouTube video, I can advertise on YouTube, blanket advertise on any YouTube channel. And if anyone in Atlanta is watching a video, I can market to them on YouTube and using Facebook. And a lot of car dealers don't know that or they don't do they don't know how to do that. So being an internet entrepreneur and knowing what I know about the internet, knowing what I know about websites, uh, I'm not gonna build my own website because I, I've been looking. There's some that have some really nice functionality, and I'm gonna actually go to the dealer and say, hey, who built your website? <laughs> I'm just gonna actually ask them point blank. Because the ones I really like, they have the car, they have multiple pictures, they have the Carfax integration. So I'm gonna have to pay someone to set all that up. But so Mac Daddy Autos is, you know, I mean, because um, yeah, Mac Daddy Autos and just do the, the rental from that 
platform as well. So their rental income, because I know for a fact, there used to be a car rental company, Atlanta Rentals, that used to do just pretty much local rentals, really a bunch of small uh, economical cars. So I can have a car rental program. Like let's say your, your credit is trash, right? So I give you a two or $3,000 car and put you on the rental plan and you do well with that for a year, then I can put you into a $10,000 car. And then if you do well with that, I could put you into a $20,000 car. And if you do well with that, I can put you into a $30,000 car. So essentially it's about getting customers, getting cash flow, and also getting a growing a customer base because um, one of the things I like about the buy here, pay here business is once you get what's called a book of paper, you can sell that. So let's say I got a thousand cars on payment plans and let's say the thousand cars per month is $350,000 per month of revenue coming in. Okay. So that's going to be like 3.5 million a year. I can sell that paper to a hedge fund. So let's say it's 3.5 and I've got, I've, I've actually got the credit apps. I got the uh, sales jackets. I got it really tight and I can sell that for 3 million, get a $3 million check. And then they'll have to worry about the payments and all this other stuff from these people. Um, also, it is very much, you know, there's a lot of stuff I know, like when I text you guys that I'm doing the live stream, I have to have your permission. So I already knew that. So there was a lot of things that they were putting in there that I already knew. So being a internet first entrepreneur is going to help me very much. So very much. So, um, I see this. And it's going to take some time to get it together. And I got to, because the big thing I've noticed is that a lot of the car lots are clustered together. So I think that is a zoning issue because I see it all the time. Like you, you will see like a whole bunch of car dealerships literally across the street from each other in a certain area. So I know that those areas are zoned for, you know, car sales and I got to get into it. I got to do some more research, but I feel that this is going to be very, very profitable. Now I can't do credit repair, but I can do credit education. And this is going to be my back there way into credit repair. Cause essentially, um, I'm going to sell a course, teach them how to fix their credit. And then I'm going to try to partner with self and some other banks and trying to create an express program where if someone signs up with me, then they'll become eligible for a credit card or something down the road um, and get some kind of kickback from that. So I'm really, really eager to get this thing started and get it built out and get it going. Um, yeah, this is gonna be exciting. This is gonna be really exciting. So I feel that with all the plans that I have, in about two years, I could turn that $150,000 into um, 2.5, potentially 3 million, Three million dollars, which is going to help me get that apartment complex much, much quicker, much, much quicker. And, you know, I like cars, so this is going to give me the option, not the first year, because first year is going to be building. And I, I, I have no intention of taking any money out of the business the first year. So every dollar that the business makes the first year is going to go back into the business. So 
having that hundred and fifty thousand dollars is going to be really critical to jump starting the business because i'm going to have to hire staff because essentially if i don't hire staff and i learn how to do titles every day that the dealership is open every day that the dealership sells a car i gotta be there so um I got one assistant. I'm gonna, uh, there was a gentleman, shout out to the gentleman I met last night at the pre-licensing thing. Uh, I gotta find someone who's gonna be competent and I'm gonna have to get someone that's gonna be a title person. It is really pivotal that you be on the title issue. So I'm gonna hire someone to work um, probably Monday through Friday and it's gonna be their job to prepare the title paperwork, make sure it's in order, make sure that it's done right. And, you know, because essentially if I don't do that, I'm gonna be literally trapped. So I anticipate hiring three people right off the bat. Three people, uh, a car salesman, a title admin person. Um, so I'm gonna teach my assistant how to do a lot of stuff. Um, so it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. And this is something else too. During the pre-licensing, um, web seminar, it was 90% black folks. It was 90% black folks. There was like a Hispanic couple there, but other than the presenter and the people who were with the group that was putting on the pre-licensing, um, seminar, Majority of the people who were there were black. Black folks are moving into business. And this is a really, really good thing because business is economic empowerment. And once I get that dealer's license, um, the next Porsche I buy, the next whatever I buy, I will be able to access these high line auctions. Mercedes, whatever, I can get those really at cost i could save myself a lot of money on my next cars that are coming and also i can do leasing i can do because one of the things i can do because like like i said i can do leasing and i can buy commercial vehicles once i get that dealer's license i can do everything and this is why i need a lot because let's say I wanted to go out and get a box truck and you know go to those auctions get some box trucks and like say you starting a moving company and you don't have enough money to buy your moving truck I can lease you a truck and those truck leases are gonna be like twelve to fifteen hundred per month so I buy a truck for ten thousand right and I put it out on a $1,500 per month lease. In a year, I made $8,000 profit off that truck. Truck's paid for. Then I can put someone on a payment plan for the truck. Uh, like I said, man, there, there's so many things I can do. There's so many things I know how to do. There's so many things. And I, I feel that this is going to be extremely, extremely profitable and I, I can't really wait to get it started. So there's a whole bunch that's going on. So you'll get to see me actually put my teachings into real life action. Who else? So there's a lot of flexibility. Like once again, you know, there's no one on YouTube who are, who's doing this, who's gonna actually show you how to build a business that they've never had before, like going through all of the process, cause I already got the LLC game on lock. And also something else I'm gonna do. Since I already know that I'm gonna need business credit, I'm gonna take 125,000 of that and go to Wells Fargo and get a line of credit. Uh, Wells Fargo has a secured line of credit product. So 
I'm gonna find out if you can use a credit card at the auctions and I'm gonna get a secured visa from Wells Fargo. And if I use that, like, if I spend $50,000 a month on that and keep paying it off, because this is one of the things, when I set this up, uh, the guy said it could unsecure the higher credit limit than what I um, set it up for. And I routinely spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month on the one I have and what I'm going to do is, once I get this dealer's um, situation set up, I'll continue to spend the money that I'm currently spending on that car for disruptive assets holdings so I can unsecure the higher limit. And then I will also establish business credit for Mac Daddy Autos because this year it's not going to help me. The first year it's not um because essentially i will have this secured credit line that i have to pay back but in the second year when it unsecures this is when this is going to be very pivotal because uh, essentially i would have cash flow at that point and i would have uh probably half a million dollars line of credit so essentially i would be able to go out and buy $500,000 worth of cars on credit. That's very, very powerful. Because at this point, um, my goal is to, by that time, get a thousand cars out on payment plans. So if I can do that, uh, the, the cash flow is gonna be, because that's gonna be about 80 cars per month that we're gonna to have to sell and it's gonna take a lot of money to get to that point so we'll probably 80 a thousand cars on payment plans the first two years so once we get the line of credit to half a million then I can go to the Highline auction and I can buy 20 20 let's see half a million so that's five twenty thousand dollar cars I can get 25, yeah, 20, 20, 20 25,000 dollars cars. So the auction, those are some really nice cars. Really, really nice cars. And then at that point, I can sell these cars and I can put people on payments and use the payments to pay the credit line back using other people's money. And I already have a very robust a book of business already on the streets. So in two years, I see this business doing half a million a month. So that's gonna be five, it's gonna be six million a year. And six million a year with a 20% profit margin. It's gonna be 1.2 1.5 million. So it's going to kind of pale in comparison to, you know, and I'm also going to continue to do the online course business. I'm going to still do that because that's even more money. But once two years from now, my gross revenue should be about 10 to 12 million across the board. And then my take home is going to be two, 2.5, maybe 3 million after taxes. So that's going to essentially put me in a position to buy this apartment complex much quicker than four years, much, much quicker. So in the two year mark, I should be in a position to buy this apartment complex and become permanently wealthy because I have to put 25. I want you to think I got the online course business. I got the YouTube business. I got the car dealership. I got the rental business and I got the credit education business. So let's see YouTube business one online course business two 
the car dealership business three, um, the credit service business four, the car rental business. So at that point, I'm gonna have five revenue streams, five. And also, since I'm gonna have a dealership, and th this is something else too, because you know this is my high mind, this is the corporate citizen mind. I'm gonna have a building where I can do on-site workshops, live events. I can charge a lot of money for a live event. So I could have like the corporate boot camp weekend where you come in and for about 16 hours, I just throw all this corporate game at you in person. And we get to meet and we get to talk, take you to dinner, maybe have it catered, serve people. So this, you know, th th once again, um, this opens up the door to a lot of things. This opens up the door. Like, once again, no one on YouTube is doing this. No one. You know, uh, shout out to JT Hustles and Raise the Entrepreneur and the Black Hustlers Club. They're like, hey, look, here's a business you can get into, which is good. Helps people out. But none of those guys are doing, hey, I'm gonna show you how to start a business that I've never been in from scratch. None of them are doing that. None of them are doing that. So I'm gonna be the only one on YouTube who's doing this and it's gonna be really interesting because of the corporate mindset of, because of the, the three-dimensional chest the way that I think, the way that um, I look at business, because essentially I get a dealership, I get some service bays, and I get like a classroom, because I'm gonna have to train my employees. They gotta be really, really well trained. I'm probably going to send them to the workshop to learn how to do titles and stuff like that. So this is going to be very, very interesting. And also, you know, I got really, really sick and I, I just completely fell off on the workouts. So first two weeks, get my treadmill game back and then I'm going to start lifting weights and I'm going to, you know, I never stopped the, I, I went from alternate day fasting to um, intermittent fasting. I only eat once a day. I eat once every 24 hours. I have a 24 hour and I'll eat and it kind of moves around, but I haven't gained any weight doing that. And I'm going to go back to the alternate day fasting when I get active. Cause once I start going out, going to the dealership, cause you know, I'm gonna wake up do the treadmill maybe work out at home and then go out. So I'm gonna burn a lot more calories when I'm out walking, going to auctions, being at the dealership. So I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get my incredible Hulk body back because after the heart attack, I lost a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle. So all that's coming back. So that's all I got for you. We'll be having little conversations here this playlist is gonna be called the car business. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be telling you, it's gonna be a lot of content on here. So be, stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.